Good afternoon and welcome back to the 9A Bowling Club. Good afternoon and welcome back to the 9A Bowling Club. We're about to bring you another of the section play uh, section play of the second group, which is just getting under underway. And uh, we'll be live right throughout, again, right throughout this afternoon. Uh, come, taking over from me shortly will be uh, John Macbeth. And then we'll be back tomorrow with you for the quarter-final, semi-final of the National Interclub Bowl Street 5 here at the wonderful complex in Nino. The game we're going to cover is that of the Whangarei side with David Hood, Laurel Jones and Daniel Hood uh, skipping. And they're up against the Canterbury, uh, Canterbury side of uh, Kim Rowlands leading Paul Newman and Rebecca Jeffs. And they're, of course, playing their first game uh, for today. And with me, I have got uh, Tom Tamati, who is the manager of the Canterbury side and also one of the movers and shakers at, uh, at the club with some <laughs> of the exciting developments that are going on there. So uh, welcome, Tom. Great to have you on board. And I um, and, uh, hope you enjoy... Uh, the afternoon and of course enlightening us a wee bit of some of the developments going on uh, at, at the club. We also will be bringing you uh, shortly once we've got the outcome from the other section that we've been playing this morning uh, of who the qualifiers are that will go through to the quarterfinals uh, tomorrow morning. They'll all merge up tomorrow for the quarterfinals so we'll bring you that uh, we'll come up on the screen shortly. And remembering, of course, if you are watching this, talk to your friends, neighbours, whoever, and just tell them to jump on board the Bowls New Zealand website and it will take you to uh, one of the platforms of where you can watch all of this uh, live action uh, from, uh, from 9A. So, Tom, the, uh, the, the Canterbury side uh, yesterday um, just had the one win, so you're hoping today that this is going to be the turnaround? Yeah, yeah, we're a bit unlucky, you see, to be fair. We, um, <clears throat> we should have probably won the first game, um, but a few things went against us. And the second game, um, we, we played really well, both games, but we decided to change things up before we played the Stoke Thunder. Um, we changed the skip in the second, because we were playing well, but we just the bounce of the ball wasn't going our way. So we changed it up, and then we managed to tip up um, the Stoke Thunder team, which was a, a fantastic win for the team. Well, that gives you a lot of Huge. push forward, doesn't it? Going in, going into the day, yeah. and uh, I see here that you're holding the shot on this, the first end, and so your side playing on the you know, on this new facility yesterday. What was their thoughts on? The green and how it all, you know, they're ha happy with the new surface here. And yeah, I, I think um, young Rebecca and Kim have both played on the, on the old surface. Um, yes. And they said it's just a bit different. I mean, it you're is. Always, you're always going to get that with, with carpet. And, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a great experience for us to be playing in this sort of stuff. Well, the good thing about the new surface is, is though, to be fair, is that we, we have got a, a, a constant speed uh, right across, which wasn't there on, on the, the, the old surface. Uh, the revamp service, and I know that the 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 the, the uh, sort of layout. These it's only the variations are very small. So you know uh, they they've done a great job here. Uh, has Mark Perrin and the team uh, on this uh, the new surface? Of course, they'll be doing a number of surfaces around the countryside. But uh, well, Daniel Hood, the Wangarei skip, just Wangarei yesterday. Pretty strong side, really, this Bongare side. And they'll be looking, they were sitting in third third position after their games yesterday. And so this format, great format, now bringing this back into a club, you know, the, the club-style uh, event. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And I think it's a it's a great opportunity for, for small clubs, like you were mentioning before about Dobson, you know, a club of 12, you know, managing to get into a, a national final event. That's, that's outstanding. And that's what the game's all about. It's about you know, involving everyone, not just the top echelon, but involving everyone in the game. Yeah, it certainly is. And, uh, you know, the, it's great to see you know, all these clubs here. And uh, we're pretty uh, fortunate that we, we, well, we're fortunate that we've got this facility at 9A. And we're really, you know, to be able to bring this live coverage to everybody, uh, we think, well, we know it's a big plus now, which Bowls New Zealand um, bring to the sport. And uh, it's great for people to sit at home and watch neighbourhood. Obviously, playing down now, looking for Jack or Bowl coming down with weight. Going to get Tangwood on the front. Going to get lucky, though, and got the shot Bowl on the way through. Pushed it out through the circle. And that's the shot. Just been t just the one. Just the one it was to the Wangarei side. Hey, you play, play with a wee bit of weight, and, you know, the result can happen. 
Well, it's in saying that, Tom, it's interesting, and I I was impressed with the weight, to be fair, which Daniel Hood used because we've seen so many games whereby they've used what I'd say in between weight. Yeah. And it's so difficult to play on this surface and get the bowl to hold up and give you the Dead result right. that you want. So, you know, I, I just say um, if one's going to attack the head, uh, I think you're better to be quicker rather than sort of pushing down the line trying to get uh, yeah we, we we spoke about it um after the first game yesterday and we we thought there's going to be a draw drive um or play with heavy weight um we just feel that with with that sort of two or three yards through it's just holdy a little bit well it we, is we, we it also surface and 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 also the, i think what you find is we, on, on carpet is that when the ball does start to move away from the head, it will go very quickly. It won't. You can play on Manutata or the out, some of the outdoor services, and your ball will hang up for a period of time. Yep. But the minute the weight starts to move off here, that the ball will just will go out. So you're far better to uh, play with that. We just saw with that that weight with Daniel Hood. Although we're a bit fortunate with the outcome of it, but in saying that. You, your bowl is going to hold up for a longer right. period of time, he heading down, heading down to the target. So, yep. yeah. So that's the way to put, to play them. And there's the jack sitting right on the the, the circle. You see it sitting there, and the lead bowls. Well, they About three feet. Long, yeah, right. they pretty scattered. So here's a great opportunity here for for the Canterbury side to really take advantage of it. Yeah, and Kim's, Kim's been leading really well throughout the whole uh, all day yesterday as well. And she's been she's had a cracker season to be fair. Um, yeah, she's just very consistent in what she does. Needs to get under this this bowl and is going to do so. Going to wait into the circle, and that's a good bowl as you rightly said. And Kim Rollins and the key to this game is forget about the jack, concentrate on the circle. Yeah, yeah, damn right. We're, and we're I know some a, some teams have struggled with that. Yeah. <laughs> You've actually got a big jack and it's yeah. called the circle. Yeah. And, um, it's I know it's a mindset, but believe me, it's uh, that's the jack is the circle. Yeah, we, we did a wee bit of practice and we um, and we just put mats out instead of using jacks. And if you get if you can get a ball within a jack, then yeah. you're then you're pretty good. You're Ab pretty close. Ab to absolutely, you are. Yeah. And of course, the problem here very early on in the head for the uh, for the Whangarei side that you, know, you can't lose bowls, you can't waste bowls. You've got to have bowls that are on the head. Paul Newman, of course, a pretty well well known bowler of the Canterbury. Isn't very he? experienced. So I actually asked him last night how long he's been playing bowls, and he's just shy of the, the half century. So he's, he's not yeah. far away from raising the bat. Yeah, no, he's been around uh, a considerable amount of time. Be be disappointed with that. That bowl, and the other thing which we were of the opinion as well, uh, and it was interesting talking to Mandy Boyd that she was certainly of the opinion that um, the furthest most circle is the best circle to play to to get more consistency with yep. your your line, etc. Um, just seems to be more generous to you. And a good bowl here coming from Laurel Jones, but not going to have the weight, and here's. And the other predicament to get into with this is you become a one a one one hand one hand yeah definitely and and it just makes it difficult. So here's the chance now for Paul Newman really to put the pressure on as the skips change over on this the second end. It looks tight on the line. How yes, far is it going to hold up? Oh, sits inside and more than likely would have, it'll count way out away away that more than likely needed to be fair time another. Another bowl's width of uh, of green to hold up long enough to get that jack level result. Yeah, how do we guide out there with the with the wind purple one? Um, just to come underneath it. But yeah, just another another bowl, maybe two bowls wide. But holding two is the uh, Canterbury side as a change over now. And Daniel Hood, very impressive player out of the uh, Northland Centre, won a number of titles up in the Fongare region. And he'll play on his backhand. Very deliberate player, very deliberate deliveries you'll see there. Very smooth, out of the hand, on the backhand. Needs to get past, clean to the shop bowl. Not gonna, there's that what exactly what we were talking <laughs> exactly yep. what we were talking about. Certainly is one of his own bowls that it got knocked up, but you just cut your shot options down, don't you, by yeah. having that having that predicament. So here is Rebecca Jeffs, very well performed player. 
uh, in the Canterbury region. She's got out on that wider line. Needs to be inside. How far is it going to come back? And had the right intention. I think the line really there now. Uh, time is just under that line fractionally. Yeah. That probably just underneath that wing. That wing probably. Yeah, correct. Just out just to the down side to there. Control. So here is on the backhand again is Daniel Hood, the skip of the Whangarei side. And well, that's definitely under the line. That's the old danger of trying to steer the bowl down the line rather than sending the bowl out to do to do the work. And yeah, we're talking about that weight before. You can see the weight that he's playing with, just that searching weight, and because it creates opportunities. Um, and yeah, and when you're playing skip and you're one down on the head, you want to be giving yourself your bowl chance. Absolutely. And there, Rebecca Jeff should be disappointed with that because that's uh, way under the head. So that'll be a, a one to the. So they're underway. That's good. One all close game. One apiece. So the Canterbury Club, um, now I'll go back to the old days, they were just like a, a one green club. Yep. Uh, I think yeah, I think they had one green in Salisbury Street. I've only been part of the club for about four or five years. <clears throat> and then yeah, what happened was that we, after the earthquakes, uh, we amalgamated. There was about three or four different clubs um, oh. amalgamated. So you know the old days of the Canterbury Club, from what I can remember, it was like the it was a bit like the businessman's Wednesday club <laughs> where that's it, you know, it was so close to town and yep. it was I know the publicans great opening bowl here. <laughs> and the publicans used to use it and the businessmen and it was uh, a one green club in that little area, but now that's a conglomerate of clubs. Yeah, so there, I think there's about three or four clubs that amalgamated in two thousand seven <clears throat> and then um, and formed the new Canterbury two thousand seventeen club. Um, and you know, from from my point of view, it was a great thing. Um, I think um, what it did, it, it made a, a club with more members. So um, where's it located now? So at the moment, it's at the Edgeware, the old Edgeware Bowling Club. Oh yes, <coughs> on Four Far Street. Um, Correct. Yeah, just in St Albans there. Um, so we're so as we're talking about before, we're there for um, probably until this uh, early next year. Where we've just uh, purchased some land in Wilson Workmen's Club at the back there, with the old. Oh, Wilson, where the, the old club. oh, so where the old green so where it used to where it used to be at the back. Yep. So they got the three greens there. So we're renovating up the two. So we've bought all that land from the Workmen's Club. Um, we've renovated uh, renovating up the two um, back greens at the moment to put um, two natural services, and then the third green around uh, around the front. We're going to um, build an indoor stadium. What a fantastic development! Yeah, and, uh, really exciting. Yeah, and it's, I, I, in fact, I remember playing in the National Fours the year. In fact, that Morgan Moffat, a uh, good ball there ball. from David Hood, uh, most of my headquarters, and uh, John Malcolm won the singles, and uh, I can't remember who won the pairs, and uh, our Morgan Moffat won the fours um, with Ken Watson in the side, Sonny Calder. And they beat us, in fact, in the last eight or something, if I remember rightly. rightly. But in those days, Wollstead was one of the clubs of the Canterbury area yeah. and aligned to the... So when you move into there, will you be aligned to the Wollstead Club no, as well? No, no, So we're separated out from the Wollstead Workman's Club. Um, so we actually purchased the land off them. So we're going to be a separate entity. We'll have our own facilities. Um, and, you yeah, know, it's a really exciting exciting time for the for So club. you'll have a full club. So the club rooms won't be the walls to work in. No, no. So really. the club rooms, where the old club rooms that used to be there. Yes. Just going to nice look of paint and a bit, yes. of, a bit of a reno. Um, so that will be our new club rooms. And uh, an and indoor complex. Yep. So the indoor complex, um, we're hoping to have ready um, by the end of next year. Um, it's all things going to plan. Um, so, yeah, hopefully in yeah, two or three years' time, we won't have an event like this down that way. So has this come about through earthquake funding as well? Yes, and yeah. So after that, with, with the earthquakes, what happened was that you know, everyone got their, got, their, got their cash from the insurance and then it's just been sitting in the bank for, for a few years, wondering what we're going to do with it. And part of the constitution was that we had to spend it on an indoor facility on land that we owned. So oh, we couldn't. Right, okay. So where we are now, we don't own the land. We just lease it from the council. So you had to move literally yep. to go forward. Yeah, and and you know sometimes you've got to take a step backwards to go to go ten, 10 steps forward. So that's a really really exciting. And so, if we talk about the clubs of Burns, like I'll use Burnside as an example. So you'll have two outdoor services and one indoor. Is that right? right? And Burnside, of course, as we know, I've got the three yep. uh, outdoors. So. 
and similar to where we had the nationals, other was at Papua Nui where we uh, yeah, played Papua the other year. Yep. They had two. So we're going to have in Canterbury a true, a yep. multi, a, a, a multi-purpose complex there. That's it, and that's and that's one thing that we're trying to. That's one reason why we did it. We we wanted to create opportunities for our for our club. And we want to create opportunities. Means that you need to move forward, and we actually need to try different things. And Going for the shot bowl here is Hood. And look at a great bowl there from Rebecca Jeffs. Turned the bowl right out of the head. Well played, Daniel Hood. Now uh, here's Hood on the backhand. I think there's still a couple down. Just hanging out the wide side there. Certainly is. And I'll be able to bring you in but a moment. The qualifiers through the post section play <coughs> for tomorrow morning from the first two sections. As you see this bowl. Oh, Rebecca just not going to drop the weight. Gonna drop the weight off it. All right, played a real good run shot with the first. See what. So it's two to it's a uh, two to Fongaray at present, and Daniel Hood with a bowl in hand. So this becomes a big end really in the first set, doesn't it? Uh, Tom, it looks to be out on that wide side. How far is it going to come back? Working now, has it got hard. the weight to get all the way back? Is it going to run all the way? I don't think so. We'll just see what they decide upon. Yeah, but this format it's so so quick. You know, you you you, you can't just you can't drop big ends. That, it that, is that's too. the important thing. So drop one or two, it's okay, but you start dropping threes and fours, uh, you start chasing the game. So I can tell you that qualifiers from the first uh, sections, uh, that Stokes Valley Vipers, they won seven from seven. That's an ominous sign. Seven from seven in second spot, the Nelson Spirit had four wins uh, from their seven, but a clear winners in that for the Stokes Valley Vipers uh, really and tied in that same. There was two other sides on 12 points, those being the Coromandel Muscles and the Blenheim Suns uh, and Patararu uh, were up there with uh, four wins as well, the same as uh, as um, Nelson uh, Spirit, but it comes down to net shots and net set points one and you can see that Nelson Spirit uh, just pit Patararu in that area and uh, Coromandel Muscles and then in the second section, Elmwood, who we uh, covered their game earlier on this morning, Elmwood, Elmwood Saints, uh, they won their way through with six wins and perhaps a surprise package. We did their first game the other morning. The Auckland Originals, they've won their way through and they actually just pipped the Dobson side, sadly. The West Coasters just missed out. They also finished on 12, as did the Hastings Hornets, as did uh, Wai Waipawa, the... Uh, the uh, uh, well, I hope I sorry the Southland side. So really, the, the, the both of those sections were all pretty tight for second downwards, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, very tight. Very tight <laughs> indeed. And, we'll, and I think I just missed it, and uh, it was put up the of how they'll line up tomorrow, who they'll play. But uh, that'll be up again uh, later on, no doubt. We'll let you know of that. So just to confirm to you, here we go. So the Stokes Valley Vipers, there they are, sitting at the top of the draw. They'll play the runner-up of Section 4. The Elmwood Park Saints, that's the Lance Pascoe skip side, they'll play the runner-up of Section 3. The Auckland Originals, they'll play the winner of Section 3. And also at the bottom of the draw there is the Nelson Spirit, who will play the winner of Section 4. So four very, very strong sides, or three, you know, the surprise side perhaps, the, the Auckland Originals, they've won their way through. I'd say that the team that surprised me missing out in Section 2 um, was the Dean Drummond Hastin, Hastings Hornet side. They always looked a, a strong contender not to be. In Section 1, though, I think it's fair to say, uh, Tom, the Stokes Valley Vibers and, and uh, Nelson Spirit, they would have been the two favoured sides. Uh, oh, they would have had to be. Like, I've been watching the Stoke boys, or the Stoke team um, play quite a bit over the last couple of days, and, yeah, they're looking looking very looking good. Looking very good, yeah. aren't they? And the Elmwood Park Saints, yes, the Lance Pascoe's skip side, they would certainly be one of the favourites. And then more than likely one would have assumed that the uh, 
yeah, that the Hastings Hornets would have literally been, I'd say, the second favourite in that section. Yeah, I think so. I think probably probably didn't help them with that losing the losing. Um, was it Natasha who had to pull out? Just she had to pull out so. COVID a few days beforehand. Yeah. That's, that, that's correct. That made a difference. So the Auckland Originals they've made their way through to the, the quarterfinals. So they'll be there tomorrow. And uh, of course, the other sections are all they get underway now, which is this is the first game of now. So at the completion of play tonight, up to round 16, uh, we will have our all of our quarterfinals found. So back to this round robin match here as we play in four, and we've got on the mat now is Paul Newman, the number two for the. So you're going to Canterbury 2017, isn't it? That's a, a that's our club now. It's the club now. Yep. Yeah, this is a big end for our, for our team. It's um, a couple light on the head. Um, you know, the fourth end, we don't really want to be trying to chase three or four down on the last end. No, and the, the other thing is, uh, you know, the, the first set, getting that first set just gives you a little buffer, huge, doesn't it, yeah, going into that points. second set. So yeah. so you'll be aiming for a big sort of big campaign to get members on no doubt one. Yep, yep. Um, we're, we're very lucky. We've got you know, Andrew Kelly's sort of um, the marquee player at our club. Certainly is. And he's, he's been involved in this this as well. So, And, you know, I've, we just need to start using them a um, bit more wisely. Um, and, you know, so he, he, you know, people want to come and play and come and see him play. Um, and, you know, it's, gonna be, it's just going to be so exciting for the whole Canterbury region. To have to have this much facility. needed, may I say? There's been lots of talk about it for the last five or six years that I've been up there, um, but finally something's happening, which is um, yeah, which is great. It is great, and I the other thing which I'd say that's going to nestle in the county area too. That bowl of Daniel Hood, so it's imperative here for Rebecca Jeffs that she can draw a shot here. Yeah, she can play under the line here and, and sit into the bunch for. Well, she's well under the line. Yeah, she's well under. Just a little bit of advice that you can never steer a bowl <laughs> to a final <laughs> destination. <laughs> Good line with a, with a wee, wee bit more weight. So, Daniel Hood now with Wangare leading 3 1. So that's why. It's, and even if Canterbury can just score the one on this end, it just gives you that chance going yeah. into the last end, doesn't, doesn't it? If you, because if you drop a number here, well, there's really no chance for no, that. No, and I don't think it, I don't think it's worth using the power play. <coughs> no, definitely if not. You, no, this is going to make life difficult. So, second shot's the name of the game here. Trying to. Well, they do have back ball. Uh, it's going to search for the jack. Yeah, I they do on, the, ball on, the on, on the backhand is Rebecca Jeffs, and very quick on the mat. Trying to get down to the jack. We'll get to these counting bowls. Need to, and we'll yeah, may well get second shot out of it, which is actually a good result from what it was. Just the one, is it? It is just the one. So yeah, a good three, reduction, three, but not the result. Yeah, three threes, threes um, obtainable. In yes, the last it is. Um, I think if you're chasing four or five, it's... Um, They're not. Yeah, shut up shot. So you'll have uh, two Manutato greens there? And uh, yep, yep, yep. So we've got um, yeah, Eric Allison and his boy, Alan. Um, oh, yes, also yes, yes. Up do, doing quite a bit of work. And also uh, Jamie Ferris. Yes, Jamie from, Ferris, yep, yes. So he's at Burnside, so they've all been doing a lot, a lot of testing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be great to, to play on two new greens. It's, um, it's a long time coming for our club. So this will be for the start of next season? Uh, no, so... <laughs> all things going to all things going to plan. Hopefully, yeah, January, February we'll be into it. So after Christmas. So part second, of next season, half. you'll be, but the the indoor complex won't be finished then. The time frame is the end of next year for the for end the of next year yeah, for so that. The main thing is that we get the the, the natural um, greens done, then we can get over there and start playing. So uh, so you receive the earthquake money, which is fantastic, etc. And rightly so, etc. Can I ask, financially, it all stacks up with not too great a burden on the club? Uh, no, it's it's good. Yeah, we we did have another option which didn't. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, no, this option here, I think, well, I think is probably the best way, best way going forward. And the fact that we own it outright, well, that's um, not, you know, you own, the, you own the asset, you own that, that's the, you know, and any money that we make out of it, yeah, you know, with corporate events and 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 uh, any, any hiring of the hall, then you know, that comes back into the club. So no doubt you're a full-time secretary manager. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but well, I don't think we've even sought that far, that far uh, forward. But yet, we'll but be needed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If we if we want to run it like a like a business, well, we need to. may I say that, that that if you want to make these things work, as Nine I have now worked through, um, you know, with a good experienced uh, secretary manager, because you know you're not going to make money to play in bowls. No, no, no. And you know we, we've been quite lucky is that um, when when the, the first planning started, uh, we had a couple of members that managed to get around to some of these places and talk to them and and find out what they did and what went wrong and what went right. And so we've kind of had the best of both worlds that we've been able to yeah come in a wee bit later and learn from other people's mistakes before oh. we uh, before we start making. Well, I'm sure all bowlers around the country, Tom, uh, you know, wish Canterbury 2017 uh, all the best in this fantastic Thank you. and exciting opportunity. Uh, and needed uh, needed facility in the Canterbury region, and you know, it, I'm sure it will be. Well, uh, to me, it's got a flag on it that says the headquarters of Bowls in Canterbury, and that's that's what we want to be. You know, we we want to be the, the flagship centre. We want finals weekends. You know, with having an indoor facility, we we want that. Yeah, well, it yeah. certainly has got that uh, flavour about it, and I trust that it all goes well for you and works itself out because. Uh, it's uh, a bold initiative, but I think uh, uh, a truly winning initiative. It's a good bowl by Paul there. And don't forget, Bowls New Zealand have got the expert on surfaces. In well, Mark I know Perrin Mark Perrin very, very uh, well. Yeah, cricket, I've yeah, known him for yeah, about yeah. 20, 20 odd years. So, yeah, no, I caught up with him uh, on Friday night and um, you yeah, had a good yarn to him about the, about the surface. So. Yep, I'm sure he'll be um, he'll be he'll be involved in there somewhere. Yeah, well, he's no, you know, Mark's one of the true. Uh, he's really, uh, oh, as far as cricket's concerned, he, we yeah, well, what can one say about uh, what Mark knows and in and in, in his knowledge of uh, surfaces, both here, not just in New Zealand but globally. globally he, yeah, he, he, right. he's uh, got fantastic knowledge uh, of of surfaces, and. Um, uh, will be a great uh, a great attribute. Uh, f- well, his his company is a great attribute for the whole bowling fraternity of of, uh, of his expertise. Yeah, he's he's actually done well to you know to branch out from just the turf sort of things, um, he has. and and then move into the synthetics um, because it, it's what's happening in the world these days. You know, we've just put uh, two brand new synthetic fields in um, in Christchurch uh, sports fields, um, and you know they they. The synthetics they can use 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Um, you go onto natural turf, you just can't do that. Is this the multi sports complex? Mul- mul- uh, this is in Rolleston, yeah. So yeah. they've just got two new, two new ones in there. So here we are, the 15 of this, the first set, that between Whangarei and Canterbury. And just again reminding you of those who have already qualified for post six and play tomorrow is the Stokes Valley Vipers, the Nelson Spirit, and the Elmwood Park Saints and the Auckland Originals are safely through to quarterfinals, which gets underway here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I think we're underway. That's a very good bowl. It is 10 o'clock. So, good, good bowl there from Daniel Hood, long standing Northland player, Rebecca Jeffs. Yeah, two big balls here for Rebecca. She needs to um, to draw two to pick up the three. Well, uh, and a touch on the jack would help, wouldn't it? Oh, more than likely needed. Great line. Great line. And uh, just cuts the scoring options down, doesn't it, really, now the, to, to get to the three, I should say. But get two and a draw is fine. Yeah, it looks like they've got two and four. Which um, makes it quite hard to pick up three. So it's play for two. Uh, well, three would be even better. Well, last set, last set. <laughs> Yes, it would. But you know, if you draw the set, you're still in a, you know, you you well, you, you, you play a one set game, don't well, you? Well, that's yeah. That's so, cool. and you know, if there's no chance of getting three, do you try and get the two? Yeah. To to literally have a, a one set a one set. Uh, oh, we need we need three for the tie. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. 
there is a shot there. She plays up onto her own and, and sits the um, the wing ball. Just going to be wide of the target. Good wait. So that's that. the first set gone. And that is the one, as you'll see. David Hood. Walking around, walking around. Out comes the measure. That's uh, always the quickest way, isn't it? So, so Wollstone Workingmen's Club, they'd be, I reckon they'd be pretty happy to, so they've sold some land. Yeah, yeah, I'm not too sure about all the all the stuff that goes on goes on behind that, but um, I, I presume they'll be pretty happy. Um, and, you know, the fact that we get a, yeah, they get a, a bowling, a uh, sporting um, facility right beside them. Um, that's which, great. which is all good for them as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because there's also a soccer club there that's there right beside as well, and you know, like we will probably end up using the restaurant um, for food and stuff. So they they will get, they will do well of us, um, especially with big events. So it was just the one, one to what? So here we have now David Hood leading off for the Mongaray side. And of course going on behind the Bowls New Zealand feature rink here, we have got uh, the full facility being used with uh, all of the rinks in action. And very shortly we'll see the cameras switch around and you'll be able to see what's going on uh, <clears throat> around this magnificent facility here at, at Nainai. It's uh, been going a few years now, and of course it came about with uh, the, couple of the RSAs moving there as well. There you can see in the top corner there, that'll give you a good overview of what this magnificent Nainai complex looks like, which is the first one of these to be built in New Zealand, and just had the new surface being laid here. Uh, so it's a full, it's a, yeah, it's a full, uh, full green, and with all the other facilities with it, you can see there as the other games are underway, uh, it's a, certainly a, a well-used, great facility here in, in Nainai, which has come about from uh, community funding, the local council, the uh, Hutt Valley Council, and um, uh, charity for funding from various sources. And of course, the RSA is coming on board here as well, making it a multi use facility. Full time secretary manager here, used for corporate events and a variety uh, of types of functions. And this is an asset not just for the 9 uh, Bowling Club, and of course, there was a merger as well. Another club came on board here as, as well. And besides what we've got here in front of us of this indoor complex, we're out, outside, we've got the outdoor greens, a further couple of greens sitting out the front of the green. And in behind there, here is the aquatic centre. So great location here as well at Nine Eyes, isn't it, Tom? It's fantastic. Well, the beauty is it's only 20 minutes out of town. You get straight onto the state highway um, and then you're, you're here within 20 minutes and it's a nice, easy drive. Um, we got lost yesterday. We started going to the Palmerston North. Um, <laughs> well, you can we... easily do that if you came from town. Yeah, we got, got, got the wrong road, but yeah. we, got, we got here that, in time. That can happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we tried to do it without Google Maps, but um, yeah, like the, the phones came out of the pocket pretty quickly. <laughs> <for the passages. laughs> so important here for um, for the your boys, your side, that they quickly you know, capitalise. And there's a good bowl here from... Paul Newman sitting in behind the jack. Yeah, this is a big game for us. We, um, you know, we're, we we've thought that five games will get us through to um, to the post section yes. in our section. Well, if we look, you're right because if we look at these two other qualifiers and the sections finished, Nelson Spirit four wins, Auckland Originals four wins. Yep. So that's yeah. an indication that right. uh, um, one would think that trend is likely to follow with that with this group this group as well. So yeah, well, everyone seems to be beating each other in this group. We've got to, you know, after after the games yesterday, yeah, um, everyone well the the winning leading teams have only had two wins, so we're only one behind them. Um, but yeah, it's really important that we so get this is a good start. very important, isn't it? Yeah, huge game. For and us. this bowl of Newman's just going to slide by, but it's in the in the area mm. as the skips change over. Now, Marcus Suwe will just confirm as they change over. 
front bolt. Looks like a shot, but we'll wait for Sue to confirm that. She's looking very closely at it. And it is one, two, to uh, Whangarei. And there you can see there's the, uh, there's the outdoor facilities. The, uh, one of the outdoor greens is another one adjacent to it. You're just swinging the camera around now. And you'll see the second green and all the works going on behind there as well for the new, uh, new aquatic centre which is going to be built. And there's the third outdoor green which used to be the old ladies club up the far end there. So this facility here with three outdoor facilities, this indoor complex is as good as any facility you'll see in Australia. Sure, it doesn't have all the gaming machines, but it does have gaming machines here. But if you talk about a complete total facility, uh, the Nainai Complex certainly offers that. Uh, and in an, really in an ideal location uh, in Wellington. It's a, a centralised spot for New Zealand for it. And just for the, like for the South Island, Christchurch being, again, being, will become, the let's say, the South Island location and its yeah, centralisation, the hub. So this... Uh, you know, Bowles New Zealand are delighted that we can uh, uh, use this uh, complex here at Nainai for a number of major events. And, of course, if we do have inclement weather, we've got the advantage, uh, you know, like at the Nationals, three greens here for headquarters. If we do have inclement weather, we can, of course, uh, have got the added advantage of being able to use the indoor complex. And, again, a similar sort of thing uh, to happen in, in Canterbury. So... It just um, opens up a lot more possibilities with Canterbury as well. Is that opens up the doors for PBA. Um, yes. You know, a few guys who have to travel down to the Dean to play it. And, Correct. Yeah, you know, they're big weekends, and then you've got to come back on Sunday night and go back to work on Monday, so you don't really get much of a weekend. So it's um, it does open up a lot of possibilities for, for bowlers who want to progress their careers and, and do, do something a bit different. So reporting here for Rebecca Jeffs. It is one to Hungaray uh, and... At the moment, I think Rebecca be a wee bit disappointed, uh, Tom, that she can't seem to capitalise yeah, on. Just, 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 just um, yeah, the team were pretty nervous coming into the first, <laughs> first half of the game, and I sort of said to them, yeah, don't get nervous, get excited. Um, Absolutely. So just, just really enjoy the moment. And, Absolutely. Yeah, no one goes out to play bad bowls. So, no, they don't. Yeah, Certainly um, don't. But, yeah, we back Rebecca. She's young. She's That's why we, we put a skip his leg in Shannon. Like, um, yeah, she wasn't scared. And so, yeah, these, these young people, they're just full of uh, confidence. So yeah. Well, you can see from her body language on the mat that uh, she holds no fear. You can see that as we watch this first bowl of David Hood. And David Hood, of course, been in the, in the Northland side and far north side as well for many, many years. Very good singles player. In fact, was a beaten semi-finalist one year uh, in the national singles and has been a stalwart of the north uh, for a long, long time. And uh, Kim Rowlands, of course, is a well-performed Canterbury player. It's just about, you know, I, I, it's about getting that first bowl effectiveness is... is uh, so important in this uh, yeah, quick that, fire short that circle, format. That circle, that and circle, we, absolutely. We just haven't had enough balls. Balls. Yeah, that circle. And, and, and your first bowl has to be making sure that you're in the in that circle. That's just that's to me is just what what you've got to do to have any chance to to build heads. And again, this bowl of hoods will go by, and here's the chance here's now. The opportunity. Here's the you know, the doors open, and this is where for. Uh, Pam, uh, Kim Rowlands where ideally if she can land right on top of the jack and you know as Mandy Boyd and I were talking about earlier on look, you get a bowl which is about six to nine inches in front of the jack on that centre line and by goodness that takes some beating but this is going to stay out on that wider side it's going to come in towards the jack it's got good weight trying, and that's hard. A, trying hard and that's a pretty handy bowl and now that's a good response Got Laurel Jones will be endeavouring to try on her forehand to tell a story as well that, that you, you, you know you, you dropped the one on the first day in Canterbury. It's imperative that, that you get that scoring mode and uh, and score, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely. And then you decide the length. Yep. And It'll like. be interesting to see when we play a power play. We um, when we played Stoke yesterday. They didn't play it, <laughs> so um, yeah, it was a bit of a faux pas on their on their on their behalf. Uh, luckily, we didn't need to, but um, you know, it'd be interesting to see 
you know, I think we need to score, we need to get the mat, and then we choose our length and then, then we play it. Well, I, I'm not going to say we, we looking at the way how the balls are coming to the head, where your length is, and it's not... It, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so, here's the chance for Laurel Jones. There's still plenty of room to draw the shot. This is on a better line, isn't this ball breaking now? It's going to dip away now. It's not going to sit inside that if the Cantabrian bowl just sits outside it. And it'll be Paul can put one close here. That puts a bit of pressure it on. It certainly it. does. Is that just got to just tighten his line up on that backhand line slightly? Does Paul Newman has he done so? I don't think so. It needs to be just a couple of balls time inside that line. Yeah, I think I think the miss today is that you need to miss underneath. Um, yes. Yeah, if, if you're outside the line, then you're not coming back in. So Correct. you can still draw it underneath the, underneath the line. That's why if you're playing to the last circle, you, uh, because the green that you've been playing to is, yep. is, is last circle green. So that means up a bit, you've just got to tighten that, tighten it up. Pr tighten that line up fractionally. And, uh, you know, the weight's good. You know, there's, there's good weight of bowls there, but it's just getting, getting that line... And Daniel Hood. He's been pretty impressive, Daniel. Oh, he's, he's good, a good, good player. He's always been in and around the, the top table. On the backhand. Just gives a bit of a flick on the finger at that. But you can see, though, that that tighter line will now work at the back end of it. Exactly what we're going to see. Might go by, but it's going to finish in that centre line position, and that's that line that we were talking about. Thomas, as you rightly said, you're better to be inside than outside, really. Yeah, I think uh, I think in New Zealand we're, we're so taught to not cross the centre line, but it's when we get into these sort of surfaces, you know, crossing the line is not a not a bad option. Well, this is just going to depend on weight because this has got the best Great line, track. but hasn't got the weight. And of course, the issue with that bowl now is creates a wee bit of now width on coming past it and this has been so many players have just found that bit of a struggle in that regard and we might see Hood change his hand so he's got no likelihood of getting tangled up on the front yeah all he needs to do is sit inside of his own it's just outside the, uh, the, the circle yeah uh, that's certainly under the line and we'll go through and a lot more weight as well. So, yeah, and then I see <laughs> Laurel Jones and David hit at the other end. They realised that it had a bit more weight on it too. Well, I think the shot he was going for was to try and sit, try and um, set the Kevin's pole. out because I think they had second and third. So, hit Rebecca Jeffs rightly changing her hand now. Yeah, this is a better line. This looks a better line. Is it going to come all the way back? Working hard to get back, just trying to get inside of it. Falls, it'll be shot. I would That's say, got to gotta be close, and it is. It is the shot. That'll give the team a bit of encouragement. It, there's two. Yeah, I haven't seen any power plays being um, being used yet. So that gives the side. Now, uh, Thomas, just a that surge of confidence and courage. Yeah, and I'll see they've actually gone to a short length. Um, so maybe they're just feeling that, that coming this way might be a bit, bit better for them. Well, as long as they don't try and overplay that green because... It's a pretty handy start. It's pretty tidy there from Kim Rowland, David Hood, very experienced... Beyond the backhand, former Far North, now Fongaray player. On the backhand, looking down on the pole. He's brought that line in. This is a good bowl here from Hood. How far is it going to run? Just going to come to the centre line. It's finishing on that centre line. Yeah, here's another good opportunity. If Kim can put another one close. And the other thing on this particular surface as well, Tom, that, that um, your delivery's got to be pretty good. Yeah, it's consistent, consistent. <laughs> if it's not, you'll pay for it. 
This looks yeah, pretty good. Good bowl here coming from Kim Rowland, the it's lead for the Canterbury side. Going to draw right in behind the jack. Falls over would be a back toucher, but that's a really good bowl sitting there. Very good second bowl now. David Hood, he'll endeavour to reach the bowl of Kim Rowlands. That's the sort of start you want, isn't it? That's uh, two very, very handy bowls. Now we just need Paul to, this looks pretty good too. Well, the good thing for Paul Newman there, that bowl of David Hood actually gives him a good line. Yeah, just jack high as well. Just jack high, so he knows his line is just inside in the David Hood bowl, and if he's inside it, he's in the counting area. And this is on a pretty good line too. This bowl of Paul Newman's, how's the weight? Has it got enough to get all the way down? Encouraging it down as Rebecca Jeffs just not quite but it's not all bad because it makes the line harder for the Northland side than it does the, the yeah. Canterbury side because uh, they're one bowl wider. Yep, third end if we can if we can sneak away with one here. That's um that that bodes well going into the fourth. So on the forehand is Laurel Jones, the middle player for the, the Northland side. On the forehand just saw a bit of an inward twist of the hand at the delivery point and see where they're looking for the jack. Going to get the gap though, isn't it? Yes, it does. Just got the gap. Had Great a, try. Oh, had a yard of weight on as well, really. Uh, Tom that just helped to hold that bowl up fractionally on the back end quickly. Is Paul Newman just trying to beat his last? If he beats his last, he'll have a counter. He's out on that wider side, needs to come back from there. Won't do so. Had the right weight that time. Just yeah, it could be a good bowl. It sort of splits up all their back ones. It does split up the back. And you can see that uh, Laurel Jones will endeavour to play again. That reaching weight to try and either set the bowl or move the jack. Got that one away better than Laurel Jones. There's no inside swing of the hand, but it's going to be under the head. And... Oh, I hate those shots. Ah, that's bowls, though, isn't it? It's bowls, but it doesn't really <laughs> yeah. affect the shot for uh, for Rebecca Jeffs because that, that moved that front bowl out so confidently she can draw to that last bowl that came in of Laurel Jones's. If she sits on that bowl, it's a counter. Yeah, and, and Paul's wing bowl sort of gives a, a pretty good pretty good track as well. You mean you're underneath that? So if he can just duck, if Rebecca can just duck underneath that and sit there, purple bowl. I'm sure David Hood will be playing that same. He'll be playing that that backhand. I think it's at one of those ends where the chance for both is on the same hand. And that's out on that wider side. Perfect weight. Yeah, and I think sort of what's happening, you're playing that shorter length, which is fine, but playing the weight of further up yeah and and you were right before you got to bring that line and say half a mat and that to, on these shorter lengths yeah give yourself a chance you know you, we yeah you just know that's not going to come in if you're too wide so yeah she really needs to be underneath that front ball so and here's the weight that we're talking about but it's going to hold up to the jack or not looks like he's got the jack as it has got so it's a good ball it's a good ball and we'll get applause from David Hood, and that leaves now, well, leaves a good metre to for uh, Rebecca Jeffs to dr draw the shot. Well, she has got the bowl out on a, a wider arc, which is a good sign. How far is it coming back? Getting applause on the way through. That's, good enough. That's good enough for shot. That's the shot itself. Daniel Hood now. And always difficult when the jack's been moved off that centre line. So Daniel Hood now. Follow that Rebecca Jeffs bowl to This two's on a good line. Good trick, yeah. Is it gonna just hang? It's coming now, it's coming now, and we'll be shot. We'll That's sit inside response. the Rebecca Jeffs bowl. It will be shot. Two regal bowls. So three ends gone. Looks like Canterbury uh, about to play their power play. Both are. Both are. <laughs> Both are playing it, am I right? Two all, fourth end. 
So, here on the fourth end, double power play on the... Uh, so this can decide the match and decide the set, this Huge. one end, can't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the whole thing that you don't want to drop any more than one. No, that's that's correct. You know, when play, you know, and we were talking about this in, this in the last game, and and, and it, it also comes as well, Tom, for teams to learn how to play the power play. To be, if you know, you've got to be adventurous. If the shot opportunities on the power play, you really got to be have a go. You got to have a go. Yep. You certainly do because uh, you know it's yeah. So a good opening bowl from. David Hood, so on the back end will be Kim Rollins trying to get down to the shot bowl. And, and we see the Fung Ray team have stretched it back out again. While they have gone to the, right to the, the rear, the deepest point, good attempt here from Rollins, just slips by the jack, but well weighted yeah. bowl. That's a good bowl on the head. David Hood now, the on this, the fourth end, play his second bowl. Just question, how's that weight going to be? Has it got the weight to get all the way down? Don't think it has, has it? No, it's not. So here's a great chance here for Kim Rowland if she can get a touch on the jack. Uh, here, Tom, she really moves, moves the uh, any advantage away to the Wangarei side, doesn't she? So, yeah, it's just, just making sure she's got the weight and play up to it. She can hit and sit um, the, the, the wing red ball. Or, yeah, you see, like, we grab the kitty. Very good. So just going to drift by on the outside as long as it stays up, and it will do. That's absolutely fine. Deepest bowl on the, on, on the rink. So Laurel Jones on her forehand. Deep in concentration as Laurel Jones as we watch. Her ball coming down towards the head. That two's going to be short. And now here's the, all I can say to the Cantabrians right now, here's the <laughs> opportunity on a power plate with having a bowl over the head to take advantage of that opportunity and nullify and put the pressure on the Wangarei side. And here's this bowl of Paul Newman's. Is this coming down? This is good weight. Is it just going to sit? to the shot I think it will I think it will no they're still saying Northland's still saying to shot Paul but, but the heads to your advantage the Canterbury advantage really uh, yeah second and third and, and back bowl so here's Laurel Jones the big thing for Laurel Jones yes she needs to make sure that she reaches the head and that's under the line and so we certainly we go for the set the bowl the trail, correct? Yeah, yep. I think um, bring that line in and play two feet through. It doesn't matter if it goes in the ditch. No, you know it's it's the gates open, and Wangarei have only got two bowls left, and head on that wider line. It should break back. Is it going to break all the way back? No, it's not. That's the way to play. Way for it. That's the way to play. It sits up again on the. I'd certainly, if we definitely, if you're definitely one down here, uh, to be fair, Tom, the jack trail is. Uh, yeah. Yep. And don't be afraid to lose your ball. Well, if Andrew Kelly was about to play a shot, I know exactly what. <laughs> shot, I know exactly what shot that he'd be playing. I played 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 a bit with Andrew this year, and it's quite good. But now that at the end, I just sit there and just let him do what he wants to do. Uh, exactly. Yeah. What he'd be doing <laughs> here. It wouldn't be trying to. He wouldn't be trying to draw the shot for one. No, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, the, great, the gates open. So here now is Daniel Hood on this, the fourth end. That's the beauty about this game, though. You know, it adds pressure. You know, it it's does, just about how people it does. He's to got the a pressure. good line here. He's going to get clean underneath it, is he? Yes, he will. And tried to now. That could have negated things. But of course, the jack was on the other side. So here now for Rebecca. Call would be, from my viewpoint, Sydney or the Bush. 
Jack looks good, and that's exactly what she's doing. All the shot, all Close. these poles. Oh, um, that's unlucky. How unlucky <laughs> was that? That's unlucky. Got the target. Uh, that was desperately unlucky. Ball spun around the head and just finished up parallel. Of course, now she's committed to that shot. And the, still, the back still belongs to the Canterbury side. So there's still every opportunity for her to play with, with weight. Yeah, probably just want to be a bit careful with the weight this now because I think they might have fourth and fifth. So Hood changing his hand now. Certainly out on that wider side. And is he trying to get coverage to the back? And he's going to go in behind the head. So this is a big bowl. Yeah, I don't think she can really play with that, that same weight because if um, if she gets into the bunch, both of ours will go as well. We'll probably be two down at the front for the, the, uh, the fifth, fifth shot. See, is the body language impression to me. She likes to go quick at things and exactly what she's doing. And this is, needs a bit of luck and not going to have it. But we did say if you're going to drop one in the power play, you drop one. Drop anything, you drop one. So it takes Wanga Rain out of a 14. <laughs> So, yeah, that was because both used the power plate. So now you really need a three. We need a three. Yeah, Badly. we need a three. <laughs> Badly. Oh, I back the team to do it. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Well, you see Whangarei stretch it back out again as well. So they've gone to the long end. So at this for. stage, Whangarei winning the first set over Canterbury 2017 and now leading in the second set. 4-2 as we go into the last end and at the completion of this match John Macbeth will be jumping into the seat here of course John Macbeth one of the doyens of sports broadcasting over so many years rugby, Olympics, Commonwealth Games canoeing just recently had, he had the pleasure of calling the big Lisa Carrington uh, uh, at Lake Carapiro in that uh, trying to get to that one spot in the K500 John Macbeth was at Carapiro calling that and it's great to have and of course John himself now very involved in bowls president of the Round Muddy's Club and uh, certainly one of the doyens of, uh, of sports broadcasting for sure and it's great to have him here, as it was great to have as well yesterday, Brenda Van Nisseroy, who has done so much bowls commentary over the years. With uh, I've enjoyed working with Brenton over a number of years now. Of course, Brenton has the media man for the Phoenix, who uh, of course have made their way through to the playoffs. How good was that result? It's a fantastic result. Yeah, great it? result. And, uh, good chance to make a home playoff, haven't they? Well, they have, and it's interesting talking to Brenton yesterday. Good bowl. Two great bowls. Yeah, from uh, from Kim Rollins and a toucher as well. You're absolutely correct, you, Tom, because uh, um, Brenton made the comment to me yesterday they're quite happy if they finish at six because they'll play Western Sydney, who they've already played three times yep. this year and beaten and them. Beaten, three. Yeah. So uh, he was remarking to me, he said, well, uh, the side's pretty comfortable if we line up uh, um, against uh, Western Sydney in that uh, first playoff game. And of course, that would then give them um, the next game would be a home, would be uh, at Westpac Stadium. So a lot to play for for the Phoenix. And I'm sure um, whether you're a, a, a football follower or not, you wish the Phoenix all the best in that pursuit. So... This is a great opportunity here with Kim's first two bowls. Um, two being, magnificent being bowls, close. isn't it? On the, so on the back end is Paul Newman. Needs to get past the front and is going to do so. And if he's past the front, he's going to score so if he sits on this. That's, that's three, three. That's three good bowls there. That's three very good bowls. And I see... Daniel Hood saying to Laurel Jane, let's not try and get the shot, let's draw to the second and third shots, try and get into that little pocket there. 
and uh, that's where the cover needs to be for the Wangarei side. We're certainly out on that wider line is uh, Laurel Jones. Daniel Hood's pretty keen on this. Is it going to get all the way back? And this is played to perfection. Ball. That's played right to perfection. That's the old heartbreaker. <laughs> well, now it's got to be, well, playing that same bowl, you ought to wait and get two rolls in the bowl, uh, Tom, and it still gives you the same result, doesn't it? Yeah, if he can, if he can get that gap... Needs to come back now to the, the centre line. line, come back, and that's the weight, though. That was perfect for that. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect weight, but, you know, that, that bowl of Laurel Jones is certainly uh, right time, right delivery, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was a, um, that was a, that was a crucial bowl for them, very crucial. To be fair, that's more than likely the, the mo three of the most consistent bowls that the Canterbury side have been able to build a head around, yeah, isn't the, it? The good thing, you know, as, as a skip as well, you, you like someone else to do it before you have to. Absolutely. So I, I'm pretty sure that skip there, the front skip, will be pretty happy about that. Absolutely, yeah. That was well played by Laurel Jones. And again, just reminding to everybody that Stokes Valley Vipers and Nelson Spirit from Section 1, they've won their way through into uh, the post-section play quarterfinals tomorrow, along with Elmwood Park Saints and the Auckland Originals. They are through to the quarterfinals, which will get underway here at 10am tomorrow morning. This is not too far away either. Going to be outside it. Yes, he it's is. A pretty handy ball, though. It is. And really, from Rebecca's point of view, um, you, you have to go for it, don't you? Oh, I think so. I think um, even movement on the kitty back could be a possibility with pulls at the back there. They might have the two backers. Correct, because uh, Rebecca's bowl would go, uh, go, go with it. Yep. Can't see it coming out on the other hand. Uh, to be fair, Tom. No, I think I think she needs to play. You know, either playing wait up to Kim's bowl and trying to get that kitty back, or you're playing that um, that shot that we spoke about before and just trying to chop and push that purple bowl two rolls. So had a good look at the head. Has uh, Rebecca Jeffs? I think they're looking to play up onto Kim's and try and sit that purple out. That's the idea, and she'll need to wait through the bowl to be able to. To get that movement, Here's, here is Rebecca Jeffs on the backhand, trailing 4-2. Needs to get past this ball here. This is a good attempt. Uh, well, unfortunately, that's the way it rolls. Sometimes it does. Not a lot you can do. You had to play a tight line with weight down there. Yeah. There's to no be fair, she was only a bow off, bow off the line. Absolutely, no sense in, in getting out too wide on it because you just your bowl's going to go uh, do nothing. So puts the, the Northland side, the Fungarei side, into a handy position. And as I said you know, before we went into this round, of course, uh, Fungarei sitting in third spot behind the Takaro Tui and Stoke Thunder. Of course, they're playing out on the other rinks uh, outside. And the next game that'll be. Oh, uh, wow. Well, uh, has this opened an opportunity up? Yeah, well, the thing, there is balls on the head for Canterbury. Absolutely. It's just trying is. to figure out how to get uh, the two Fung Ray balls out. <laughs> We're leaving your balls there. So the next game that we'll be bringing you live uh, on the Bowls New Zealand YouTube channel is that of the Masterton side. So it's Masterton up against the Kerry Kerry Crushers. And John Macbeth, he'll be bringing that game all the live action for that game. Then the United Hawks of Nelson up against on the drive, and it's gone. So there we've got Whangarei. They are the winners. They have run out the 5-2 in that second set after winning the first set by four shots to one. So that's the Whangarei side of David Hood, Laurel Jones, and David Hook. And they've defeated the Canterbury 2017 side of Kim Rowland,
Paul Newman and Rebecca Jeffs uh, by uh, two sets to nil. And that's a very handy win for the Wangarei side. Not so much, of course, uh, for the Canterbury side. A lot of work to do now, Tom. We're into post section. You're into post section <laughs> play. That's correct. That's, that's the way to look at it. So uh, thanks for being with us, Tom. And thank, thank you very you much. For enlightening us about what's going on with the new development in Canterbury. That's all exciting. It's fantastic to hear. And uh, I speak on behalf of all bowlers that we wish Canterbury all the best and hope it all goes well. And we'll be back live with you shortly with John Macbeth sitting behind the microphone. And he'll be bringing you the live action for the remaining rounds this afternoon. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. when the quarterfinals will be live here at the 9A Bowling Club for the National Linda Club Bowls 3-5 finals. This is Kevin Hickland and we'll be on online again tomorrow morning.